By the time you're watching this video, you probably heard of the log4j vulnerability going around in the Java ecosystem. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about what it is, more specifically how it affects your Spring Boot projects and how you can fix it. And we'll do it right after this. What's up, friends? My name is Dan Vega, and if you're new around here, I run the website danvega.dev. I just released a new edition of my newsletter, which, by the way, if you're here and you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? You can do so right here on the homepage. You can even come over to newsletter and you can see some of the archives from the newsletter. Here's that one that I was just talking about, the new contract slash log4j vulnerability. You can go through and read that one if you want. But if you send me your email address uh, every week-ish around Monday, I will send you a newsletter and just kind of talk to you about things that are happening in, in this world of software and more specifically kind of Java, JavaScript, um, Spring, that kind of thing. So if you're interested, go ahead and drop your email address and I'll get one out to you next week. So I was talking about this in my newsletter, the log4j vulnerability. And at that point, I just started digging into, uh, you know, what was going on, who was it affecting, what exactly was happening with it. Now that I've had some time to go through it, uh, I got into work, you know, this was a big topic at work this week so far, uh, you know, taking a look at, at projects, which ones does it affect, which ones doesn't it affect, how do we fix it? Um, so now I've had some more time to dig into really what it is and what projects it affects. And so that's what I wanna do today. Again, I think more specifically from, from a spring standpoint, uh, you know, are you vulnerable? Uh, and if so, how can you fix it? So I'm gonna go ahead and include this link in the description below, but this is a really great article over on Lunasec about what it is and what's going on with it. So this was found on Thursday, December 9th. It's a zero day exploit in the popular Java logging library, log4j, the second version. And that's gonna be the important part. Um, you'll see uh, down here that in the affected Apache log4j versions, this is log4j2, anything from 2.0 beta 9 all the way up to 2.14.1, which is important uh, because the Spring Boot version that I'm using right now, that is the version of log4j that you end up getting. Um, but a uh, little spoiler alert, just out of the box, you're not vulnerable. So if you're just creating a new application and not really changing anything, you're not vulnerable. But we'll get to that. So the fix went in in 2.15, uh, which is the, not the newest version. Actually, this morning, I think I just saw that two dot, uh, either 2.15.1 or 2.16 came out, uh, which is just another thing, another fix on top of that. So I'll give you a chance to go ahead and read through this, uh, understand how the exploit works. I'll kind of just talk about it at a high level. But in our applications, we get an instance of a logger, and then we use that logger to log out messages. Um, in this attack right here, uh, we are accepting user input, right? This is from a header, this is from a user agent. Um, so anytime you're accepting input from users, you know, you know this already, you gotta sanitize that input. You gotta be very careful of what you're, ex you're accepting from them. So this takes in the user agent and um, the user agent header here is a JNDI lookup to an LDAP that gives a website where then you can take that code and that could be run. And so there could be some malicious code in there. So at a high level, that's kind of what's happening. So it also talks to you on how to repro reproduce this locally and uh, the steps to, to have this uh, exploit run. So I'll leave this link in the description below if you want to get into it, but what I want to do is focus in on Spring. So what we're going to do is we're going to use start.spring.io and we're going to create a new project here. So we are using the current version, which is 2.6.1. We're going to have a Maven project in Java. Uh, this is going to be called dev.danvega. We'll call the artifact log for JV for vulnerability. And that should be good. I'm gonna use Java 17. And then I'm gonna add a couple of dependencies here. I'm gonna add the web dependency. Uh, I'm also going to add um, Lombok because I just wanna show an example of that. 
So what we'll do here is we'll generate this project, we'll open it up in IntelliJ, and we'll go through a few things. Right, so here we are in a brand new Spring Boot application. And the first thing that I want to take a look at is really the dependencies that we get out of the box when we chose web and Lombok. So I'm gonna jump into the palm.xml and as you can see here, we chose the spring, we chose web under the dependencies and we get the starter out of the box, Spring Boot Starter Web. And it's important to understand that if you're kind of new to Spring Boot that these starters bring in a bunch of other dependencies. So here in IntelliJ, I can go ahead and command click through and see what other dependencies are listed. So under here, I know that there is also a Spring Boot starter, which has other dependencies. So I'm gonna click through there. And underneath Spring Boot starter, we have another dependency for Spring Boot starter logging. So just by indicating that this is going to be a web project, Spring knows that, okay, you're probably gonna to wanna to do some logging at some point. So we're gonna include uh, some, some uh, pre-configured logging for you. And so if we go into that, the first thing that we'll see here is that the default logging framework for um, Spring Boot here is logback. So everything that we use, um, so we use SL4J, which is really a facade on top of other logging frameworks like logback, like um, log4j, like uh, Java utils logging. So SL4J just kind of sits on top of that, but the default uh, logging framework is logback. So this is why I said earlier that if you're just creating a new project and you're not changing anything, you're not vulnerable to this exploit because we are using logback underneath the hood. We are not using log4j. So that's important to know. That's one way to kind of dig through the dependencies. Uh, another way is you could always come in here and look at your external law libraries here. I can start typing and say log4j, and we'll see that we do indeed have some log4j uh, dependencies in here, but I wanna talk about that in a second. Another way that we can get to that is if we open up a terminal here, we can use Maven to say, all right, I under the dependency plugin, I wanna go ahead and uh, look at a tree view of those. So what it'll do is kind of put these out in a tree view and then that kind of shows you which ones are the parents and children. Um, but if we start looking in here and we type logging, we can see that. Remember I showed you that kind of cadence before of that order of where those starters are coming from. So here's the Spring Boot Starter web, which brings in Spring Boot Starter, which brings in all of these, one of which is logging. So under logging, we have log back. And then there are those two log for J jars that I talked about before. So <clears throat> even though these are log for J jars, I wanna make it very clear that these are not the ones that are going to make you vulnerable to this exploit. You actually need to be including log4j core, um, and this is log4j2, um, the core jar. And that doesn't get brought in in this instance. Again, remember these were kind of just bindings for SLFJ um, to, to those specific logging frameworks. So that is not going to, um, make you vulnerable. So just to make that clear. So now that we have just a standard project, let's take a look at how we can use logging in our application. So just the um, kind of manual way of, all right, I've included that Spring Web Starter dependency and I get logging out of the box. What does that get me? So I'm going to go ahead and start and by, we'll create a new public or private static final logger. So as we type a logger, you can see the different options that we get here. So we have that java.util.logging, uh, we have sl4j, we have logback. Um, so what we're gonna choose is SL4, slf4j. And we'll call this log, and then we need a logger factory. We're gonna get the logger for this particular class and that will give us an instance of a logger. So now what we can do is say, um, here's a, a message and I wanna go ahead and log that out. And I wanna say something like that. Uh, so just a little heads up, if you're seeing some of this kind of completion for me, this uh, these hints, these, these suggestions for, for 
lines of code that I should be writing. Um, that's actually coming from GitHub Copilot, and I've done a video on GitHub Copilot for Java developers, so if you're interested, uh, check out the link below or in the card above. So now what I can do is, that's really all I want. I wanna go ahead and run this application. And here's our message, logging hello world. So again, remember before I showed you in the exploit, um, when you're using a logging framework like this, when we say log info, this string is now going to replace these curly braces here with the variable message. And that's how that happened before is we were pulling information out of the user agent and replacing it in that string. So again, accepting user input, user input is always, you should always tread lightly when you're doing that. So, that's kind of the first one I wanted to show you. Um, I wanted to show you another kind of variation of this. So if you use log, uh, Lombok in your applications, you can just use the at SF, SLF4J annotation and it will pull in um, basically the same thing. So you can see I've, I've kind of uh, commented this out. If I go to build and I build my project again here and I look in the target directory under classes, and I find this one, you can see that the generated source code looks very similar to what I just used. So really the, the kind of point of this was that annotation there is really just writing that line of code that we did. So in either case, uh, you're still fine. All right, so there's another instance I wanna look at. So what I wanna do is let's go ahead and remove these imports. Let's go ahead and remove this line. Um, oops, sorry and let's remove this line. And what I wanna do now is I'm going to create um, another instance variable here, but this time, instead of of type uh, um, SLF4J, we're gonna use the org.apache.logging.log4j. So we're using a different type here. Now we're using log4j. And what I want to do is just go ahead and say log manager .git logger. And again, this is very similar to what we were just doing in the previous one. So I'm going to say log for j application class. And that is going to work just how we did before. So if I go ahead and run the application, uh, everything is going to work. We're just using a different framework under the hood, right? To, to go ahead and write that lock message. But so the reason I bring this up is we found a lot of this similar type of code in client projects where we were migrating from older legacy applications into new modern applications using say Spring Boot. And so if you have some of this around still and you're using this, this is not, again, this does not make you vulnerable to the exploit. So if we come back to our terminal and we do that same command, Nothing has changed in this instance for logging. So if we look at this, um, so here's our starter logging. We're still including log back, the L, log4j to sfl4j. So that is just that one, and this is just the API jar. We don't see any more log4j core jars being brought in. So I just wanted to bring that up to say, if you do find this stuff in your code, uh, where it's doing this, you are not vulnerable. It's only at the it's only the instance where you kind of override the defaults here in Spring Boot and ex explicitly bring in uh, SL or uh, when you explicitly bring in Log4j version two. So I do want to take a look at, at where what that looks like so you can spot it in your applications. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll head over to the palm.xml and. I'm gonna go ahead and copy some code just so you don't have to watch me write this out. But essentially what we gotta do here is we are in the Spring Boot Starter web, you know that we bring in uh, Spring Boot Starter, which is what includes the uh, logging starter. So we gotta do here in our own palm is kind of override that. So what we're gonna, you know, I've just pasted in this code here. What we're saying is, hey, in the um, Spring Boot starter, I want you to go ahead and exclude 
the Spring Boot starter login. I don't want you to bring that in because if you bring that in as normal, you're going to get SLF4J with logback configured and that's how it's going to work. But in this case, if you don't want that, if you want to kind of provide your own login, you can. You just got to exclude what Spring is, is already bringing in. So in this case, we are, um, we are going to, to exclude that. Then what we need to do is we need a dependency for our, let's see, artifact spring boot starter log for J2. So now what we've done is we've explicitly brought in log for J2. And now if we go ahead and look at our terminal and run that same dependency tree and look at logging, or let's look for log for J. So now if you look under here, under log for J2, we have um, this, which is the guy we were talking about before. So that log for J core 2.14.1, this is in that range that is vulnerable to this exploit. So We've brought in log4j, but we want to use log4j. Uh, what, what can we do to kind of fix this in our applications? We don't want to go ahead and rewrite applications. How can we fix this? Um, well, the way that we can fix this is coming back into our palm under properties, and we're, de we're going to declare the version of log4j2 that we want to use. So we're going to say log4j2.version is going to be 2.15.0. So now if we come into our terminal and clear this out and go ahead and run dependency tree again, and we'll just do a log for J. Now, if we, oops, now if we come look up here and we're looking at log for J core, we're now using 2.15.0, which is going to keep us safe from this vulnerability. So that's just a quick way of both checking your dependencies there, and then if you are using that log4j to starter, how you can go ahead and, and bump that version up. So it's really just a version change. Um, so if you need to go ahead and, and fix some applications, that should be a, a quick fix. So I think that's it. Um, we took a look at you know how the logging dependencies kind of get brought into your application, which dependencies are there. More importantly, out of the box, you're not vulnerable here in Spring Boot. Uh, but if you are overriding that uh, Spring Boot starter and choosing to exclude the logging starter and then bring in log4j2, that is when you are going to be vulnerable and you need to make sure that you have patched that to the latest version. So I know in upcoming releases of Spring Boot and Spring Framework, they're going to correct this. Um, but if you need to get that done immediately, that's how you can fix it. So, hey, if you've had, if you found value in this video, please go ahead and leave me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and as always, friends, happy coding.